it is not about being selfish because being selfish is completely the opposite of self care whereby you put your needs first but in a way and fashion that depletes another namaste beautiful souls this is rashmi shanaz your spiritual well being guide welcome to fit tak today i shall share with you why self care is not selfish but before that let us move towards our tranquil zone of chanting the mantra om tare tu tare tu re soha this is an ancient tibetan mantra that means i prostrate to the liberator mother of all the victorious ones this mantra is related to tara the mother of all buddhas who tibetans also call dolma and especially to her manifestation as green tara but also used as the main mantra for all the forms of tara commonly thought as this green tara form is the protector who comes to our aid to relieve us from physical emotional and spiritual suffering tara is said to have 21 different forms represented by different colors and spiritual attributes today we shall chant on the central form of the green tara so let us relax our body mind and spirit to get ready to invoke the green tara through this mantra do a little intent prayer before chanting if you wish to for any kind of spiritual emotional mental physical suffering for which you may want relief pray to her to bring you god's love to send everything that is no more serving in your life to the light so do some deep breathing and relax get calmer and calmer from within breathe in breathe out inhale exhale now i guess you are ready to begin the chant let us chant three times together feel the vibrations through the chant and post the chant as well om tare tu tare tu re soha Vibrations of the words. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha. Inhale the love and compassion of the Universal Mother. passion coming from her to you to heal all that is unserving in your life and to help you with life enhancing practices that move you towards complete well-being most of the people have this misconception that self care or self love is being selfish but that is not so As per our childhood mind conditioning we are almost born and brought up with the thought of only taking care of others doing this or that for others go out of your way to do this or that for others which is beautiful which is really good because we need to know that real happiness does lie in making others happy but at what cost is the question this comes to a term called people pleasing which refers that we take care of others but by complete neglecting of ourselves self care is honoring our true self in doing so we honor everyone else and at the same time say 
I matter. It is not about being selfish because being selfish is completely the opposite of self-care whereby you put your needs first but in a way and fashion that depletes another, that kills another, humiliates another or does anything which is harmful to another person. Putting yourself first at times while considering the need of others is filling your cup up that is going to overflow at some point of time and then you will share that wholesomeness with others as well. In every relationship there is giving and receiving because that is the balance of the universe. Every inhale there is an exhale and when that is in imbalance then comes the dis-ease or discomfort. The same applies when we are trying to do everything but by neglecting our own selves. You need to positively put down your needs and desires and ideas and know that they are just important as anyone else's. That is being true to yourself. We need to learn to cross this abyss of separateness from ourselves and others. So take some time to let your mind quieten, to sit in the sense of presence and listen deeply to your gut, to your intuition. And in that unique temperament, feel that you need to be honored. By whom? First yourself. Imagine that there is this huge wheel and you are the central circle, the circle that is holding all the spokes. Right? Now, think of yourself as this circle, which is holding the spokes, as I said. And then these spokes is your mother, your father, your brother, your husband, your fiancé, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your neighbor, your boss, your best friend, everyone else. All these spokes are connected to the outer circumference, but meeting to the central point where you are there. They are connected to this inner circle and that is why they are your mother and your father and your sister and your boyfriend and your boss. If this circle goes away, then they are individuals. They are Mr. Patel, Mrs. Patel, they are this, they are that, they are Mr. Brown, they are Tony, they are Sweetie, whoever. In childhood when we wrote essays, what did you write on myself? I am so and so, this is my mother, that is my father, Tommy is my dog, this is my servant, this is my best friend. Where was myself in that? Right? So you see how this conditioning works? Right from childhood we are tuned to just think of those spokes which are connected to the circle. And in the bargain we skip the entire truth of life that if I am not there, these spokes are going to fall out. There is no wheel of life. It does not exist. They can exist as individuals, but they are not connected or interconnected and interdependent on this circle. So if you erase yourself out by depleting and burning out, then you are of no use to anyone. So what are the circumstances and things that can foster this change? How can I bring more life into my life? How can I be at my wholesomeness as this central circle and hold on to the spokes which are part of the wheel of my life? If you are redundant, if you are of no use, then you are not going to be helpful to anyone. Forget, not even to yourself. So first and foremost, understand that you need to release guilt if you are taking care of your own self. Because if you are doing so, then actually you are loving your loved ones far more. Imagine a person who is in the hospital. That person is being treated. The person is being, you know, given whatever best treatment the doctors are doing, the family is doing for them, spending all that money and everything. I've been there. Between death and life, hanging out there not knowing if I'll come out. But what happens? What happens to my that father and my relatives and my loved ones who are seeing me in that state? What happens? They are far more badgered than the person who is ill itself. 
And that is what we do actually to people we love in the pretext that we love them so much and that's why I'm burning out. As I said, I've gone through this. I've made this mistake and I've touched death and come back. So what can you do to not go to that line? First and foremost, release the guilt. Release the guilt of self-care and self-love. Because if you do not bring that in, then you are a redundant toolbox. You are a rusted knife. You cannot exist with your full potential and purpose of existence if you are not at your optimum levels. You can be recycled to be used as anything else, but not for the purpose that you exist for. Can you use a rusted knife? Can you use a broken bulb for its actual purpose? You cannot. And that is what life is. So here I bring you a few tips and questions that you can ask yourself when you meditate. Your true nature may be able to accommodate and collaborate with others when you allow it to flourish. So listen to your intuition, your gut feeling, your inner self, your higher consciousness and ask these few questions. What are the things that I can change? What are the things that I need to disconnect from which will allow me and result in me operating from my true self? Out of respect for your own self, think what can be done truly and envision your true self expressing itself out into the world. It is very much possible. Ask these few questions to yourself as I said during meditation and see what answers come up. What is the one word that you could use to describe yourself? If you had to change one unserving habit or thing in your life, what would that be? What are the most proud accomplishments of your life that you wish to tell the world? What is that one thing that you think people will be surprised to learn about you? What would I do if I had all the money, resources and free time in the world? What places I would visit? What is the last good book that I read? What is the profession that I could follow which helps me live my life purpose from the core of my being? If you answer these questions and start prioritizing yourself and becoming whole from within, then you will be able to give more to your loved ones. You will flourish and that overflowing cup of love will only and only be able to share more and more because it will constantly replenish. It will constantly be filled up. So do that to yourself so that you can honor your own existence and that of your loved ones. I hope that you are benefiting from these videos and you're practicing these mantras and other exercises and things that are shared with you to build your spiritual immunity. Write in the comments what are the questions of your life or what are the things that are impending in your mind that you would like me to share some spiritual wisdom on and I shall try to incorporate it in our videos. Until then, keep watching Fit Tuck for more uplifting videos and I shall see you next week. Stay blessed, loved and protected in love and light and super duper Godspeed.